why no action was taken on the sickness report. OK, is it, was it purely because it would cost too much money to implement it? So we just stick our head in the sand and just hope it doesn't happen on our watch. And this is Operation Sickness. Just to explain to my listeners, this was a, a dummy run back in 2016 when Mr Hunt was Health Secretary for a pandemic. And it is reported that some of the areas and some of the m- m- neat work that was required and is needed now was reported and possibly was ignored. Mr Hunt, you were Health Secretary. What would you say? Uh, Well, the opposite was actually the case, Mike. We did a massive amount of work um, to prepare the NHS for this kind of situation. And I think we've seen in the last three weeks the incredible lengths the NHS has been able to go to. uh, The opening today of the new Nightingale Hospital in the Excel Centre by Prince Charles. Um, All those things, perhaps the most important thing we discovered from that exercise was the need for emergency powers to allow the government to act quickly. Um, And those have now sadly had to become law because of what we've faced. So, you know, internationally, the NHS was rated by an American think tank as the second best prepared system in the world for a pandemic. And I think uh, we have been very prepared. Of course, that doesn't mean we've got everything right. And of course, um, you know, as chair of the Health Select Committee, it's my job to hold the government to account. Let's bring Mike back in. Mike, do do you feel you're living in a nation that is well prepared? Mike? No, I don't. In all honesty, I don't. Three weeks ago, if you listen to the World Health Organization two months ago, it was test, test, test and trace. Look at the the countries that have done that and look where we are. Three weeks ago, all right, uh, when uh, Nick just said yesterday, right, his choice was to actually test patients as opposed to staff. You're opening up these hospitals now. I just hope hope we have enough healthy medical and nursing staff to be able to man these. And aren't you, Mr Hunt, arguing a little bit against yourself because you've pointed to countries such as Taiwan and Singapore and what they've achieved, and yet you're saying we're well prepared, but in the other breath you're saying that we need to learn from them and operate differently. Well, the answer is you have to do both. Um, well, and uh, we did... Uh, we not been that we, well prepared, Mr Hunt. And what about... Vent- well, I understand that. The shortage of ventilators was highlighted in Operation Cygnus and nothing was done. Well, that's not the case. And um, we were modelling in that situation, in that exercise, what would happen if we had 750,000 deaths. And we knew the health service would fall over and we wanted to understand everything we did. And, you know, in fact, in ventilators, I think, and I've been someone who has been critical of some aspects of what the government has done, but I think ventilators is an area where enormous progress has been made in the last couple of weeks with the work that's been done by uh, people like Dyson coming on stream. But what I would say to Mike's point is he's absolutely right. This is uh, not flu, which is what the Operation Cygnus was preparing for. This is a coronavirus. And the World Health Organization advice is very clear on that. Test, test, test. And that's why I thought it was wrong when we stopped testing in the community three weeks ago. And I made that very clear. And that's why I strongly welcome Matt Hancock's announcement yesterday. Because if we... Uh, get up to 100,000 tests a day, which is what he's promised, then we will be able to follow that World Health Organization advice. And so I think we need to give credit where it's due. I think the government has listened and they are seriously now going to be ramping up their testing. All right, last point on this before we move on. It was reported uh, last week that one of the things that came out of the exercise was that certain eye equipment, eye protection equipment was required. uh, And it is reported that you blocked the purchase of that eye kit, Mr Hunt. Well, that is not true. And uh, there was no decision taken by any ministers to do that. And again, I'm very pleased that yesterday uh, Public Health England uh, changed its advice to make it clear that people should be wearing eye protection throughout the NHS in line with World Health Organization advice. Um, Because, uh, you know, as we know, if people cough, the droplets can linger in the air a long time. And uh, if you're looking after a patient, you don't know when they're going to cough. And if you're a nurse or a social worker or someone working in a care home, you can get very close to them.